welcome to the Heather Penny Podcast, where our goal is to help you reach your potential by increasing clarity, building confidence, and engaging courage. Dr. Heather Penny is a leadership coach, trusted advisor, and admired author. I'm Christina Morales, a writer and marketer, and Heather is my dear friend, and she's my coach. I know you're all jealous, right? <laughs> they should be. <laughs> today, we're continuing with our theme for March, Your Powerful Life. And today, we're going to talk about blaming others keeps us stuck. Oh, this is another yeah. tough one. And this yeah. one I'm super guilty of. So I'm really excited and scared to talk about this today. <laughs> We're going to get vulnerable here. Yes. So I thought this would be the perfect theme of living a powerful life because blaming others is giving them our power. So I thought if we could stop blaming others, we're going to take our power back. And so Heather, why do we play the blame game? What's up with it? Well, you know, I think one of the things I first want to honor and respect is typically we get stuck in the blame because in our childhood, we were modeled to blame and oftentimes we were the target of blame. Mm -hmm. So I just always try and give people this compassionate out <laughs> to say, okay, you see that you're a blamer. That's okay. Cause a lot of times and they're horrified and I go, it's okay. It just means you probably, um, experience this more in your growing up years. And you get to recognize that when you know better, you do better. I think Maya Angelou mm -hmm. said that. And I love that thought when you know better, you do better. That's kind of a grace wow. space. You just give yourself and say, now that you see it, go ahead because you can see what happens when a blamer starts seeing themselves clearly in the mi mirror what do they start doing? They start shaming and blaming themselves. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I, you know, blame and shame are very closely connected. Blame, shame, guilt, obligation. These are all closely interwoven in a complicated kind of yucky woven tapestry. So, you know, I just kind of gently put that out there and say, blaming only keeps you stuck because it just keeps giving your power away to something else instead of owning it for yourself saying, I get to I get to do something about it, or I get to recognize that I was a victim to something, but I am going to heal from it. I'm going to re be restored from it. I'm going to be stronger and better for it. So I think this whole idea of blaming, um, it's so limited and it keeps you limited. And I think the more you can own that, the more you can start recognizing what does it mean to do something other than blaming. Can you give us an example of blaming and how it would hold somebody back um, sure. I usually like to start with myself. You know, mm -hmm. I got thousands of people I've worked with, but I like to always honor their <laughs> stories and not right. share them on, on the air here. So I think I'll start with myself. I think I noticed it in myself and my marriage early on. Hmm. Um, I was feeling uncomfortable about some career moves I was doing. I was feeling insecure instead of owning, owning kind of that vulnerability that I was experiencing in my younger years, my twenties and my thirties, um, I started feeling angry at my husband. Hmm. Why? Because I'm feeling vulnerable. That's a form of blaming someone. And we're saying, Hey, you're responsible for my awkward emotions here. So I'm going to blame you and point anything little from why didn't you feed the dogs to why are you home late? There's this then antagonistic relationship that starts happening mm -hmm. because it's someone else's fault that you're feeling bad or vulnerable. That's probably a more deeper, complex one, but there's even simpler ones where I've seen mm -hmm. um, parents do this to their kids quite a bit. I've had a bad day at work and somehow it's your fault. And so I'm going to be grumpy with you at, when I get home from work. That's an unfair way of blaming your kids for a really hard day or an emotional messy day to be able to come home and say, wow, I've had a really hard day. Kids, I just need, you know, 10 minutes to myself or an hour to myself, or mm -hmm. mommy's going to order pizza and we're going to sit down <laughs> in front of a movie, you know, depending on their age, depends on the level of honesty you can offer, but mm -hmm. that keeps you out of blaming them and making them a victim of mm -hmm. your blame. So these are some kind of common examples that I see quite a bit. I've done, <laughs> I've experienced and what I try and really make sure that I get out ahead of. And I'm like, it's nobody's fault if I'm feeling vulnerable or messy or um, <clears throat> not put together. <laughs> 
-hmm. it's mine to take a closer look at. And if I don't own that and take responsibility for that, it's going to leak out and particularly on those I love. That's good. Um, we discussed several times that counseling is looking back and coaching is moving forward Mm -hmm. and blaming is clearly holding on to something in the past, or we blame them. It's, um, it's their fault why I can't do this. So how do we let past hurts go and move forward? I think I've seen this be very difficult relationships and I've been on, I've been on the receiving end of some, of some blamers that when they never owned what they're doing, we really didn't have a lot of hope to move forward. But when they stopped and owned and said, wow, I think I'm blaming you because I'm unhappy with my own life or my own own marriage. I had one person one time I was talking about my in-laws. I love my in-laws. Well, she didn't like her in-laws. She finally, she turned to me and said, can you stop telling me how happy you are with your in-laws because I'm not happy with mine? Hmm. That's a form of blaming because she's saying it's kind of your fault (laughs) <laughs> you're in the middle of this happiness and joy and you don't get to feel that because I don't feel that with mine. So now I'm going to blame you somehow. You know, that's that really weird, confusing space. When I recognized that was happening over and over and over again, it's a form mm-hmm. of control. I realized, wow. uh, I don't want to keep staying in this relationship. <laughs> There's they're, they're blaming me for their own pain. They can't celebrate me. They can't be happy with me. They're frustrated with their own life. And for some reason, I can't be happy with mine. There's a form of blame there. It's a shifting of guilt. It's a shifting of responsibility. They have no responsibility to either work on the relationship with their in-laws or they're not taking responsibility for for how they feel about it. So they're just going to get mad at me that I feel good. Mm -hmm. Um, The whole blame thing can be really insidious in a relationship. Being on the alert for it helps you really take a step back and say, wait a minute, I'm not sure why I'm getting blamed for your pain. Mm-hmm. but I'm not okay with it. And if you can say that in a relationship and they can course correct and the other person can say, Oh, I totally am sorry. I can see that I was doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where the relationship can move forward. If they can't, and they just feel like they have the right or they're entitled to blame you and you keep taking it, <laughs> then you're going to stay a victim in the relationship. So blaming is, it's very sad. It's sad for me to watch. I see it happen a lot in marriages. It's easy to slip into that blaming space that says it's your fault that I'm unhappy. Mm-hmm. Everything from the fact that um, whatever, you don't love me enough or you're not showing up for me enough or you're you're always, 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 I hear the word always and never. It's usually a trigger that they're starting to move into that blaming. Yeah. It's hard. I don't know how much I should say, but... <laughs> um, So I had a sister who was bipolar when we were little. And so it's, it made our childhood very difficult and our relationship is strained today because I do blame her for a difficult childhood and she blames mom and dad for not knowing how to handle Mm. it correctly. Mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? I don't, you know, like Mm -hmm. ownership, ownership, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I think we get stuck in the blame if we've never been heard. So mm-hmm. you probably want to give yourself the space to, to have someone validate you. This is usually where I go hire people. <laughs> Can you just listen to me and tell, and tell me you're right. It was really unfair. You know, I kind of laugh at myself so when funny. I do this because I feel like I'm, I need someone to go tattle to and say, you're right. It was unfair or a referee to say, you're right. Flag penalty, you know, so I think you first want to get yourself heard Mm -hmm. and if you keep going to the people that aren't hearing you that's where we get stuck and we stay in the blame so the first thing is get yourself heard get yourself validated so get in that space where I go finally someone validated (laughs) me and they said you're right and here's what happened you know and sometimes I pay many sessions to get that validation sometimes I go to a friend and say isn't this unfair and, you know, she'll say, of course, it was awful and cruel. And here's why. And then I feel validated. So I think that first space is, is recognizing you get to be heard and you get to be validated by, by what you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think then as you start doing that, then you start getting to be at that crossroad where you're facing the decision and the choice to start moving toward forgiveness 
forgiveness for yourself. You know, forgiveness is a is a beautifully <laughs> self care gift that we give ourselves. <clears throat> and oftentimes we off, we make the mistake that we think it's about the other person. It's really not. Mm-hmm. So I will start with I choose to forgive what was done to me, no matter how horrendous it is, or how mad it, or how mad I am about it, or how much I feel um, victimized by it. I'm going to choose forgiveness, mm-hmm. and that journey and making that choice begins the journey to get to forgiveness. And sometimes for me, it's instantaneous. And other times I'm not going to lie to you. It's been years that mm-hmm. I have to forgive and I can feel like I'll have moments of forgiveness. And then I have to pull back and go, Oh, you're still mad. That means yeah. you don't get validated again. You know, you have to go get heard and feel validated again, because in that process, you just weren't ever heard and you weren't validated. And so we get stuck in that blame. Cause we're trying to get, we're trying to get our emotions to be valued and to feel cared for and to feel like we matter and we count. And I think that's the compassion I have around people who get stuck in blame. They're mm-hmm. typically not aware of how to get validated and they just keep hanging on to their perspective and demanding, demanding people to continue to, to validate them versus stepping into it with uh, in some sacred spaces to say, I want to get hurt on this and I value this process. And then I want to move toward forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Does that help at all, Christina? Totally. You said something so interesting. That was, it made me think of when you blame others, it makes you the victim. You did this to me. And as victims, we get stuck in our victimization. Like, oh, I'm hurting. And then it just that's then we get false beliefs i'm a victim i'm hurt and and we don't have any power we give our power to the other person because now we're stuck being a victim and you never hear of someone saying they're a powerful victim no you're a powerful overcomer and so that's where we get to move forward and not stay stuck is we get to address it and then move forward so i think that's beautiful well, it makes me think of, you know, I'm just thinking about two styles of parenting and I've watched, I've watched people do it this way. There's two, two different parents that are coming to my mind. And one of them was really, it was, it's two daughters. And one of them had the style where they were, they were looking for where their daughter was being victimized. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So interestingly enough, that daughter, guess what she grew up to be? Wow, a victim. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you got it. So, and that was because the parent hadn't dealt with how she was feeling victimized. Really? So it was unresolved stuff. You know, that's what we do. We all as parents can, we have to be cautious of how we bring our baggage to the parenting relationship. We all know that. But interestingly enough, she, in her desire to try and bring power to her daughter, she was actually keeping her more stuck because she kept looking for where she's being victimized. Mm -hmm. Then I saw the other type of parenting, which is, Um, really teaching her to be strong and resilient, but the the daughter was feeling (laughs) sad and sensitive and heartbroken and the mother was dismissing it because she wanted her daughter to be strong. And so the daughter grew up actually very fragile. Ironically, it was the opposite. Yeah. And overly sensitive to our world because she was dismissed too often, too much, too too long (laughs) with, uh, with her sensitivities. And I say this with both respect because I know I've done the mistake on both. I am both a strong mother and a sensitive mother, but I've probably been sensitive when I should have been strong. And I've probably been strong when I should have been sensitive. And several memories are coming to my mind, even (laughs) as I say that, but I don't think I'm going to share them. I'm not that vulnerable today. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Um, I feel like Blame has some sneaky siblings that are in the same family, but they kind of come in different forms, like bitterness, resentment, anger. What are some other feelings that we should identify so we can address them and say goodbye? Yeah, I think we identify Blame by just recognizing some of the hard emotions and honoring them. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. So if we have something that's kind of this idea of clean anger, it's this um, this awareness that I'm angry for a good reason and I need to give respect to it. Mm-hmm. But if it's, if it's an anger that we're not being honest about what's underneath it, do I feel disrespected or am I disappointed or do I feel mistrusting or unheard or what is behind 
that anger. If we're never quite honest with that, it's really easy to slip into blame. Hmm. So it really goes back to kind of owning this powerful life is staying connected to your true self. And I think we've talked about this in other podcasts about my emotional category sheet, Mm -hmm. really being clear with what am I feeling? What's behind this anger? And I've recognized if I'm not clear of what's behind my anger and I'm thinking about in my marriage, it'll be really easy to just blame my husband for not being whatever, fill in the blank, you know? And I think that as I own what really makes me angry and say that out loud, it helps my, my husband to hear where, where I'm coming from. And it makes me step into that vulnerable space that says, I, you know, I feel disrespected or I feel embarrassed or I feel disappointed. Some of these harder, more vulnerable emotions. And I'm going to own that because I don't want to just get mad at you and blame you for me feeling all these things. So we often skip over that really powerful vulnerability step of saying, this is, this is me hurting, but I'm going to tell you really clearly where I'm hurting because I trust that you love me enough to do something about it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we've talked about blaming others. So I want to know, when do we take responsibility for some of our actions? For example, okay, this is the theme of, of the podcast. Um, it's, I'm having problems with my weight. (laughs) So it's my fault. I'm not eating right. I'm not exercising. I'm overwhelmed with the world. And that's been put on the back burner. And so when do I take responsibility saying I'm not eating right? I'm not exercising versus um, why did my mom give us dessert at the end of dinner every night? And now it's become a habit. And now it's all my mom's fault because she didn't have us eat healthy. You know, like when it's a bad example, but you know what I mean? Like, sometimes we blame others for our own actions. So, or, and is it even worth finding fault? Is it time to address the problem and not the catalyst? Like when do we, instead of being upset about the issue, it's okay, well, I'm not going to say why I'm doing this. It's just time to get healthy. So when do we, how do we manage all of that? It's a tangle of emotions. Oh yeah. And actually that's a really good example because I'm going to use that one. Yeah. Yeah. That was really good. Okay. okay. (laughs) Um, I think as you're digging into that fourth cookie for dessert, (laughs) I think instead of, yeah, I think instead of saying, I can't believe my mom just always made these cookies for me and had dessert. It's her fault that I want four cookies every, you know, Yeah. I think what you get to learn to say is this has nothing to do with my mom. Hmm. I think that's the very first thing that you want to just put a boundary there. We're an adult now. This has nothing to do with my mom and why I want four cookies. <laughs> I, first of all, I'm going to see why I'm wanting four cookies. And I'm going to ask myself, why do you feel like you want four cookies? Okay. Historically, there's a little bit you can give some credit to that you grew up having dessert after each meal. And that's what something you're used to. So maybe we can create a new habit. Um, that's one area. Another thing is, wow, I had a really hard day at work today and I'm feeling stretched and strained and I'm exhausted. I've earned those four cookies. So you're just getting honest about why you're eating that dessert or maybe a, a, a massive amount of dessert. And then you're saying, am I okay with I'm eating these four cookies? And honestly, I will say, yes, I am. <laughs> but... I'm going to deal with why I need four cookies and I really want like eight more. So clearly it's this moving into this false comfort, which we know that that's emotional eating. And so I think you get to honor the space, which you're in, but the moment you hand over, it's my mom's fault. What are you going to do? You're just going to keep eating the cookies. (laughs) You're not going to take your power back to say, here's where I'm really struggling. Mm. And I know I can, I know I can address this. I may not be ready to dress it tonight as you're chowing down on that fourth cookie, (laughs) but you're at least taking that power back that you get to step into this when you're ready and it's nobody's fault. It just gets to be your journey. And when you're brave enough, uh, you get to stop and take a look at it and say, I can do this. And if I can't do it alone, I get to really look for help and guidance to support me in this so that I can take this journey and feel loved, loved Mm. through it. I think that would be the, the too good to be true. 
And when we blame, we just, we take out the ability to be love and be loved. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's the saddest thing at all. They just, love doesn't even get to be part of the equation. We're just so busy being mad at everybody else. Mm -hmm. And we take love out of all of it. And I think love is one of the strongest, most powerful catalysts to change us. How we love ourselves in the hardest times and the most vulnerable times, how we offer love to one another. Um, and haven't you changed? I know in my marriage, my husband has offered me love in times where I had self-loathing and it's changed me. And I think that awareness that love has this amazing power to completely transform us, but blame is a blocker to love. Mm -hmm. We can't love ourselves. We can't love others. And what do we do? We stay in a catch 22. We just keep eating those cookies, mad at someone else because we're eating these cookies and then we lose all our sense of power. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I also feel like we can blame ourselves. Like you're saying the self-love mm -hmm. portion for getting stuck. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously, I would call it regret. Like I'm trying to move forward with my life. And there are so many things I wish I had done to better position myself for these changes. So how do I not get stuck in this feeling of regret? Hmm. Yeah, I've heard people talk about that and... Of course, I've experienced it. I'm trying to figure out how to put it best into words. I think regret is another way of keeping us stuck. Mm -hmm. But I think regret can also be the catalyst for uh, a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I, I think when I feel the regret creeping up, I, I'm not really good at this right now, but this is what I'm working on. I'm trying to say, all right, Hev, what is it that you wish you could do better <laughs> and how do you want to offer it today and how do you want to forgive yourself for not being able to do it yesterday or years ago mm -hmm. and so regret can, again can be a catalyst for higher uh, higher self-awareness but not to shame and blame mm -hmm. but to forgive and to learn and to find better ways to move forward and to honor the path that we are really trying to carve out for ourselves so that we can walk it and maybe someone behind us will be able to walk it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> Join us next week when we talk about learning to ask the right questions to get the direction we need. Please subscribe to the Heather Penny podcast and for questions, comments, and resources, visit heatherpenny.com. Remember to live your best life. You have to live intentionally without regret or blame. <laughs> yes. Have a great day. And we can't wait for you to join us next week. Thanks, Heather. You're welcome. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.